Welcome to a first impressions of Final Fantasy 16, the demo. We definitely have a lot of things we want to discuss. And I got Matthew Manny with me. I know he would. he's definitely going to be an interesting perspective. So how would you like to begin? <laughs> Honestly, uh, no idea. <laughs> I guess uh, I figured we could start just, just from the beginning of the demo. Just uh, So how do you feel about the, uh, what are they called, the Titans, I suppose? Icons. Icons, is that what they're called? Yeah. Sweet. So, I mean, it's always been a Final Fantasy thing, you know. Um, I think they're really cool in a sense. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing how they contribute to the story, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Shiva was really cool, like when she blocked that attack. Really dug that. The animations are beautiful. The art's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but the intro, it felt like I was watching Lord of the Rings, you know. <laughs> with, uh... The Balrog and Gandalf falling. Yes, I was wondering if anyone else would catch that. Yeah, it, it felt way too spot on. Yeah. And that intro bit was so, like, slow and just like, it wasn't it, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a weird way to start it off. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna experience that. That's like, a more seasoned gamer and be like, yeah, this is this is it. This is what I wanted a Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> but fortunately. That's where the bad stuff ends, right? Like, from then forward, I, you know, it was a little slow start. You know, especially, it wasn't the prettiest environment that you start in. Mm -hmm. It was just rocky and nothing really, like, showing off in the environments, you know? Right. But it was a cool spectacle to see, like, the battle starting and the icons going, you know, fighting each other. Like, they did a really good job with that. And then, pretty much, as soon as you get through that part things pick up dramatically mm -hmm. uh the story was gripping it was you know kept my attention uh love the characters love the character designs for the most part and uh it was just nice to see like finally a mature final fantasy i've been wanting one for a long time and i always felt like it was holding final fantasy back from telling a good story so i'm looking forward to this and knowing that yoshi p is on the team that's good for the story and for the art design because we don't have all that futuristic stuff i'm just not a fan of Unfortunately, the beginning where you actually get control for a little bit, um, not the cinematic sequence where you're, t you know, I didn't. Yeah. Even, here's the thing, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even press a single button during that uh, icon sequence, whatever it's called, you know, where you're, where you're, where you're the phoenix. Yeah, I don't think you'd have to. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just let the control, I just set the controller down to see what would happen, and it just carries on. I'm like, why in the world would they even let you do anything if it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's so drawn out too. Like even oh, the yeah. actual fight is drawn out. I get they wanted to build it up as like this huge fight between these two titans, and uh -huh. you know the payoff was good. I don't know if we're getting into spoiler territory here, but yeah, just we'll just talk about everything. I mean, I didn't get, I didn't uh, fully explore the the bonus stuff at the end, but um, yeah, don't don't worry about spoilers. We'll we'll definitely get into that. So just spoiler warning. We're going. We're going to talk about everything as much as we can. All right, awesome. Yeah, um, is there any, like, specific questions you had or things you wanted to talk about? No, I figured we'd just riffed on uh, just pretty much just the whole demo. I uh, Like, I, um, getting back to what I was talking about a moment ago, like, it kind of gets onto that uh, typical beginning of a game. It last, uh, like, pretty much the only example I can think of right now, but I know I've seen it a few times, I'm pretty sure, is... Uh, don't you think that Hogwarts Legacy kind of starts the same way, except it's just not as chaotic? Hogwarts Legacy? I don't know. Hogwarts Legacy, like, was more chaotic in some ways. Like, you're teleporting to different places. Like, you don't even know what the hell is happening. You're just caught up in the midst of something that's almost otherworldly and magical. Like, I actually thought the intro to Hogwarts was nuts. But then the game kind of settled down as it actually started out. Okay. But just, like... That that was crazy to me, but yeah, the intro. I don't know. It did it. It did jump you around a little bit, like through time. But I always like knew what universe I was in and kind of where we were heading. I didn't feel like the character was ever like in some place that they were just completely awestruck by. You know what I mean? Well, <clears throat> yeah. I was primarily um, talking about the tutorial where it, where it's telling you where the jump and stuff, and it's very. It, I, I, it felt very similar to Hogwarts Legacy, where you just got to where you're on a. We start out at a cliff. And then you gotta jump over a rock, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, like where it goes through the basic 
controls and everything. Yeah, it's like it's, it's so strange, you know, how they still have to tell people how to play video games like no one's ever experienced one or they can't figure it out that X is jump. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense, you yeah. know. It's, it's going to draw in new players for sure. Oh, yeah. It's going to have people, like, just getting into gaming. Like, it's always going to be a thing, so it's important to have, like, a little tutorial bit. And I don't mind it. It's just a matter of how you handle it, and I think they did fine. Um, but speaking of the way they handled things, I think they handled a lot really well that oh, yeah. I didn't expect. Like, one problem that comes up in games, right, is I'll gather up consumables, and I'm always afraid to use them, right? Because I mm-hmm. always feel like I'm going to save them up for something where they matter. Oh, yeah. And I never use them. I, I have, like, a massive stockpile of consumables, and I use some of them here and there, you know, just to mess around, but ultimately I don't use them. And in Final Fantasy, there's a limit to how many potions, high potions, other stuff you can have. And once you reach that maximum and you consume another one, it just, or you gather another one or find it, right? It just consumes it. So, like, if you're not healing throughout your playthrough and uh, you're just collecting stuff and you pick up a potion, it'll automatically heal you. So I don't feel like I'm wasting any potions and I feel like there's a benefit to not using the potions because I can keep my stockpile for an emergency, but mm-hmm. then I'm getting healed just from exploring, right? Which is, was kind of a cool way to handle it. I mean, it's not like yeah. it's the first time it's been done. But having it heal you when you can't pick one up, I think that's a good move. It made it feel like you weren't wasting stuff. Like, it was still a way to, you know, benefit you, even though you couldn't carry it. Okay. And it also balances things, because in Final Fantasy, a lot of times, you can just amass potions, right? Mm-hmm. And in a game like this, where it's a little more leaning towards action RPG, um, having a sh- just a ton of potions, right? Like, you're just going to chug, 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 so... It's a good solution for that, right? It keeps the difficulty from being too low, just being able to chug a bunch of potions, but it also keeps it from being too high with only having three potions and not being able to, you know, heal yourself in other ways. Mm -hmm. So I really like it so far. And aside from that, there's some more, like, little just details I've noticed that I really appreciate. Like, in combat, you know, in a lot of games, you'll have, like, your melee attack and then your ranged attack. Well, this goes as far as... You know, your ranged attack in the midst of a combo, so say you melee attack and then you do a ranged attack, it changes your ranged attack to part of the melee combo and just adds like a spell explosion instead of shooting a fireball. Mm -hmm. And it's a small thing, but it's like it just gives you a little bit more freedom in your style. And it also doesn't do so much damage that you feel it's necessary. It's just a flourish and you can do it at any time and it doesn't feel like it's completely game changing. I think it does more like stagger damage, but... It was just a cool detail that I, you know, noticed, and on top of that, um, the skills in the game, right, uh, you unlock them, whatever, um, and there's two of them that are, like, you know, charging your normal melee attack or charging your ranged attack, which, you know, to a lot of people, that's pretty basic, but you can do them both at the same time, right, so you could hold square and triangle, and you're gonna charge your melee attack and your spell and you'll see both your hands busy like you'll have your sword glowing and your other hand glowing and that might sound impractical right because most of the time in combat you're just like keeping up the pressure but you know being similar to dark souls in some ways as a lot of games are nowadays are picking up things from it um and it's not like dark souls is the first to do this with the action rpgs but Mm -hmm. having the ability to you know iframe dodge combos and stuff if you space the combos instead then during that time, you can charge up your abilities, and then say you have your melee and your range charged up. If the enemy, for example, is just idling, you can hit them with the melee that you charged up. However, if they jump away, you can hit them with a range charged attack, right? So it gives you that option, right? Or you can hit them with the melee, and then maybe they'll do a retreat, you know? Because sometimes when you attack an enemy that's vulnerable, they retreat. It's that way in Dark Souls, and that way in final fantasy with things i've noticed there's retreat moments where they like jump back so doing mm-hmm. that you could hit them with a charged melee attack and then follow it up with the charged range and get some good damage and stagger on them yeah yeah that's definitely then you a could, good point yeah then you could immediately close in with that phoenix thing and continue you know there's so many ways to just keep the pressure up and keep the fight going which is incredible and it's like I saw somebody saying that, like, they wish the charge times were faster, and I disagree, because it's like, they're already pretty fast, and it's about when you use them, not just being able to use it right in their face and release it instantly. That doesn't serve a purpose, really, you know? But there's a strategic time for it, which I think is pretty well balanced, Um, which goes to show who is on the team, because you have, I don't remember their names, but you have 
literally people from uh, Nier Automata, Dragon's Dogma, Devil May Cry, which, you know, they're both Capcom. But having them involved, those are some of, like, my favorite action RPGs in terms of, like, the combat, the way they function. So it's really cool, you know? Um, and you can really see that their love has been put into the game, that Yoshi P's love has been put into the game. And then it's cool seeing, like, the Final Fantasy fourteen and thirteen or whatever, you know, uh, races and stuff in the game. It was just cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what else is there. I love... Maybe we'll get to see some Moogles die. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I love little charming moments, uh, little tiny charming moments. Like uh, whenever you have to break through something, you could just press R2. and It's, it's got a nice little uh, you know, resistance yeah. to it on the trigger. Well, uh, that's very well. addicting. Uh, yeah, no. and something else I like about that, right? Like, so you could just run through and open doors and stuff if it was just a door interact button but it gives you like that little barrier between you know being able to run past enemies and open the door or being able to run past enemies and then getting hit out of opening the door you Mm -hmm. know it kind of makes it feel like you know there's a reason that you have to stop and fight everything yeah it's it's a good way instead of just having like some kind of special you know like ghost gate pop up you know like in god of war or uh well, the other games yeah. are, you know, like, well, actually, other Final Fantasy games where it's just, it builds an invisible wall, but instead of here, you got a castle where it just, I, I, can you even interact with the door when there are enemies nearby, or does it actually still allow you to interact with it? To what extent, I have no idea, but okay. I've encountered one situation where it came in handy, so I didn't really bother to try. When I got in combat, it was a matter of taking things out with style and quickly, yeah. and I got so into it, like... I couldn't believe how much I was into it. Like, mm-hmm. it felt a little on the easy side. Um, you know, I didn't have to heal or I didn't die in the playthrough. And it's not because I, like, played exceptionally. It's because it just, the damage that the enemies did was pretty null. And yeah. it seems like there's an auto health regen mechanic in the game where health just kind of slowly comes back. I don't know if I was just imagining it, but... I don't know, I didn't notice anything like that. Yeah, I felt like if I went without taking damage for an extended period of time, my health was coming back. Like, you'll notice there's like a little uh, gray, kind of grayed out part of your health bar when you take damage. Mm-hmm. It seems like that was kind of recovering. Well, have you, did you see what the assist rings um, do? Uh, yeah, I didn't equip them, but I think in the second portion that some of them are on by default, but I never bothered to check my gear. I just figured however they start me with, that's how I'll play it as. Because I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. So I was like, alright, you know, I'll give this a shot, but no, it really wasn't. There's a... You don't mind me talking about what you haven't done yet? Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. So, oh, what is her name? What's that chick's name that, uh ends up being she's bad she's got like the black dress uh what benedicto or <laughs> yeah benedicto um she was pretty cool but something that i really kind of presented was just how long these fights are right like including the balrog fight in the beginning where you know it's not a balrog it's you know but these fights are just kind of too long sometimes mm. and Like, it never felt too long when I was doing them because it was really fun. But, you know, like, with what we do, like, challenge runs and stuff, it's like, I go to upload some, and I I had recorded for five minutes, and I'm like, oh, fighting that Morble was uh, seven minutes or something. I don't know, because I I didn't even get to record the whole thing. I went to look at the footage, and it was over five minutes, so I couldn't even, didn't have it all. Yeah, mine was about seven and a half. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't know, it was kind of a... just surprising and then i looked at the other fights and i'm glad i recorded for longer because you know some were like anywhere from three to eight minutes and that's a lot eight minutes for a boss fight on a normal difficulty without challenging myself too much right well hopefully they uh you know there there are some certain items that increases the attack points up a little bit and makes fights a little bit shorter but not you know to an overpowered state but of course you know we regulate to where it's not overpowered of course but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I saw that one fight you had where it was like, what was it, over eight minutes for that one boss fight? I was like, dang, if, it, if it's eight minutes, 30 seconds, or whatever, I had a regular yeah. play, then, you know, who who knows it'll take, how long it'll take for me to, like, not, not dodge that fight. <laughs> yeah, eight minutes, seven seconds is the video, and, you know, a little more than the seven seconds is, like, 
the end death animation and the intro, you know? And there's cutscenes in there too, so it's oh, like okay. the fight itself, it's really not that horrible. But it's just, I don't know, I feel like they get padded out a lot, which is fine. Um, as long as, I have a feeling like fights as you progress through the game are going to be more cut into the point, you know? Because mm-hmm. I can't imagine everything in the game is going to be like that. But I think the beginning, um, these fights were made to be more like grand and epic for the sake of exactly that, you know, just making it feel grand. And I have a feeling as we progress through the game, it's probably going to drop off a lot with the story and give us a lot more just like exploration and, you know, just wandering around the world and fighting stuff at our freedom, you know, just like doing whatever we want. So I still think it'll be like somewhat on rails. Um, Mm -hmm. but I'm expecting a lot more, like, downtime from the story, and more just, like, rapid killing, 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 exploring, you know? Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get to a point where it gets really grindy, because a lot of games, you know, they they get to a very particular part, usually about two-thirds through the game, and it's where they're like, oh, you need to start grinding, you gotta, because it's just, either the battles are lasting too long, or you need, like, 1,000 gems to open up a door or something like that. So I really hope the game doesn't do this. I hope it, hopefully the side objects are, yeah. are actually, you know, side objectives. It's not entirely, you know, mandatory according to the game's design. But you just go off, you want to kill a boss, and then maybe go back to the story once you're kind of out of the burnout or whatever. And apparently this, this the story is actually rather short you know, according to reports. So hopefully it stays with, you know, within that 20, I think, 20, 40-hour range is what they're saying. So we don't have to worry about a one-hour, a 100-hour story like Persona 5. <laughs> That's actually good to hear because that two hours that we played in the demo, I would have paid 40 bucks for that. Oh, yes. yeah, I would have, easily. I would have paid $40 for that as a game. Not because it necessarily was a $40 game, but... Because nowadays, by the standards that games are released, like I, I would have paid forty bucks for that. I probably wouldn't have paid more. Mm-hmm. But you know, that alone, it was like a fun enough story. The fights were fun. It would have been like a cool indie game, except it was beautiful. You right. Know? So yeah. for the full price game to get like ten times the story content, like I'm into that. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Oh yes, I, I don't think it'll be as brutal. I have a feeling they're gonna drop because you know. For the for the demo and the intro, they're wanting to get everyone hype, you know. They got yeah. like the main characters dying off. Like you can only kill so many main characters before you run out of people to kill, which they pretty much did. <laughs> Are you gonna start oh. over on the on the when it when you finally get the full game? It depends. If they had different difficulties, um I'll probably start on hard and just do it over. But I might start over just for the sake of like being fresh on it and being able to see it again and refresh the story and kinda have it right there instead of like you know 10 days in the past so is, I may a, restart. is square enix good about playtesting their hard modes or do you, do you know anything about that so square enix as far as their hard modes from what i've experienced um i don't know about playtesting but they always work out hmm. and they're never like overwhelming it's always just kind of a. Uh, I don't know a little bit harder, a little more cares to be put into fights, but it's never felt like Square Enix has never really been like the most difficult. You know what I mean? Right. It's mostly the strategy, and this being more of an action RPG, it's really hard to gauge because we don't know if we're really going to get difficulties. Or at least I don't. You know, um, the action mode it didn't really feel like it was you know a hard difficulty by any means. And that was with none of the accessories equipped. So, I'm yeah. not really expecting much difficulty, but I don't really mind, honestly. Okay. Uh, sometimes I wish there was a little bit of extra detail that they would add whenever they're, you know, promoting the game, saying, "Yeah, we fully playtested play tested the hard mode. Works for every playstyle or whatever." But it's just we don't. I don't think I've ever. I don't, have you ever seen anything like that where a developer came out saying, "Oh yeah, we play tested everything." <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <clears throat> so I know some developers who've been slacking on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, how how far are you in Hogwarts Legacy? Have you touched that? Uh, no, I've been working too much. Um, uh, okay. I got my broom and got a little bit past that, and that was it. 
I still want to play it. It's just I really don't have time to like commit to a long game. But let me tell you, Final Fantasy 16. I don't care. I'm gonna be really tired at work, and I'm gonna play games when I'm home. There you go. And yep, and on my breaks because I get three breaks at work because working ten hour days. Uh, I'm sleeping. I'm gonna take a little naps. Oh yes, definitely. Got to have your naps. Yeah. Um. So getting back. Uh. So we were. So let's see. Yeah, you had that one section with the cliff where you only play for. You know, I think what, what maybe two or three minutes of gameplay, maybe maybe five minutes, and yeah, then. Maybe. You you finally get to the core gameplay finally um, where you're playing as the young, uh, character when he's younger with two dudes and you're yeah. in a swamp and you finally see the the goblin enemies uh, what what do you think about their design do you think they look cool so just to backpedal a little bit before the goblins um, there's like you know you're in the town the city mm-hmm. uh, it's gorgeous I, I'll get to the goblins because it's kind of in order um, I, I forgot about the t- the tutorial so if you want to talk about that too yeah um i don't know i thought it was really nice it was nice how they like kind of got all the characters introduced and made even some of the minor characters feel like characters you know Mm -hmm. what i mean even the ones that get killed off like everybody felt like a part of the world the city felt like a part of the world like everything felt natural you know it right like the world was so like believable and even with final fantasy that's not really common Usually things just feel like, you know, you know how it is. But it was really well done. And then uh, I think the tutorial itself, like the combat tutorial, was kind of goofy. Like it didn't really, it wasn't the best, but it did teach you how to play. Mm -hmm. Um, But the combat itself is so well constructed that it just kind of taught its, it teaches you itself. And it's like easy to pick up, but also has depth to it. And then once we do go out and we do fight the goblins. Now, my favorite type of goblins are like... Dragon's Dogma Goblins, or like Grimgar Fantasy and Ash Goblins, if you've ever seen that. Um, I like I like that kind. But these ones, at first I thought I was looking like like a Dobby or something from, you know. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure. I was like, my precious? You know, like what's going on? It's like, are we playing and, Hogwarts uh, Legacy? Fortunately, when they turned around, they were some ugly little motherfuckers, so that was nice. <laughs> Looked like bats. Yeah, but <laughs> beyond that, like, they were ugly, which I liked. They, yeah. They looked like, you know, their own type of goblins. They were unique. It didn't feel like a copy-paste, so it was kind of cool seeing, like, a unique take on goblins that didn't feel cheesy or cartoony. Um, and then I also noticed a little detail when killing them that, like, the way they die and then kind of lay on the environment yes. looked really natural. There wasn't, like... Like, their corpses, they look dead. Like, it's a weird thing to say, but, like, every, like, part of their body made contact with the ground. And it didn't look like they were all, like, disjointed and broken. Like, you know how some character models, like, you'll see their bodies, like, warp and mm-hmm. kind of break where it looks like their arm couldn't possibly move that way or something? Like, everything laid naturally. And that was, like, it looked pretty difficult to do to make it that good. Yeah, but we don't get we don't get that detail enough where things just stay in the rendered world. It, usually, when you kill yeah. something, it just you know just fluffs away and in, in, yep. into a poof. Yeah. And so I'm so glad to see like those go- the goblins are still dead even when you're fighting the goblin boss afterwards. Yep. So yeah, that's just I really awesome. Appreciate that persistent yep. enemies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so that area is actually. Um, after giving it a second look, I really like the design. Just a little, I mean, it's not much, but I really like how yeah you can break little uh, wooden planks to get to another, get into other sections and find. It's, it's not the most complex thing I understand, but it not really. I don't, I don't yeah. know if the full game's going to have more in it or not. That's why I kind of want to just start all over because it won't take long to get through all of it again. But I just also want to yeah. explore and make sure I'm not missing anything. They want to just you know secretly and <laughs> secretly place in and. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, because I think I heard it was like a year old version of the game. Oh, so yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I, I'm I definitely starting that, over then. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if that's true. So I'm oh. gonna probably start over just, just to do like I said, just to refresh everything. But there's a good chance that like they're gonna have better options because first off, the graphics mode sucked, right? Like that had motion blur, like crazy. Uh, when you rotated the camera, it just it's disgusting hmm. like it, it functioned but 
compared to the graphic or the uh, the frame rate mode, like I, I'm not huge on like graphics and frame rates and stuff. Like I don't need like 90 FPS and all this. Like I'm not a competitive shooter player. I find it, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it it was a dramatic difference, right? I'm hoping that in the final release we're gonna have proper options to adjust things like motion blur and a little more graphic settings. Because I feel like for the demo, it hopefully was simplified. Yeah. Considering it might be a year old build, but if not, I don't know. Those the graphics mode is rough. Uh, do you think they'll allow us to disable the heads up display? I hope so. I was talking to one of my buddies about that. It would be really nice. So what about um, uh? I'm assuming that the cinematic strikes will probably just maybe remain there because I mean, unless you, I mean, that's pretty consistent, right? Whenever it glows a certain color, it's always the same button, right? Yeah. Okay, so I guess as long as you memorize that, it won't be a big deal. But I don't. I mean, just sometimes if you, I mean, even if when you disable the heads-up display, a lot of stuff still stays in. Like with Dark Souls, um, reading a message prompt still pops up. So it does everything inorganic on the screen doesn't entirely go away. Yeah, I'm. I didn't really pay a ton of attention. Um, I'm gonna ask you this. Did you notice when you were swapping between, um, we'll call them spirits. I don't know what they were like. Uh when you played the second part of the game after the beginning of the demo where you got to like swap between like the wind and the fire and the was it water i don't really know or earth um when you got to swap between those uh was there a visual cue on your character themselves that showed you what you were on um I don't know. I I can't recall. I didn't spend don't I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on it. I got to the duo fight and that was basically it because you can't save anything or restart because oh yeah because you you know because you know I mean I was going through with with the specific challenges and uh, unfortunately with this extra extension it, you basically just go through it and it's just there's no back. It was just you know just straight yeah. just a straightforward kind of progression. And you also got checkpoints in the phases, which kind of sucks, but I understand why it's there. So it's like in the if you like died yeah. in the duo fight, you can you have to restart. I'm I'm assuming you restart when the second phase starts, but maybe not. But I'm sure that it had there's some kind of checkpoint. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't even know there were checkpoints in the fight. Oh yeah, because I was messing around with uh, I think Morble, and you know of course he's got three phases. And if you die on one of those, you know, like two or three, then you start whatever phase you were on. Jeez. So, like, if you ever, whenever you're going through a challenge run, you pretty much got to reload, you know, from the, you got to save before the boss. And then if you, if you mess up, you get hit or whatever, you got to pretty much just reload that, that save state. That's not terrible. Yeah. Being able to save the game before fights. So that's all right. And it yeah. was just that one challenge mode that was like this so i think the the full game we're not going to have much of a problem with that so that's good yeah yeah <clears throat> as long as you know where the boss fight is going to be i mean uh, i don't know um hopefully that i don't ever run into a situation where i can't go back before the boss fight i don't i, I didn't seem to have a problem with that um yeah. sometimes the save was maybe a, a few minutes before the boss but at least i knew where it was and it didn't take me too long to get back uh i, I did that, that happened to me uh I don't know. These areas were rather short, so it wasn't a big issue because, of course, you got the Goblin King boss, and then right after is the Marble boss. Um, right. So it wasn't anything dreadful. I just hope that doesn't. There's no conflict with that later on in the game when maybe there's longer sections or whatever. Right, and then you get surprised by a boss, and you're trying to do it under a certain condition, and then you go to restart, and then you're like way back to the level. Yeah, and you got all the stuff you got to recollect, so that might be that might be a problem, but. Hopefully the auto saves are a bit generous, but I don't know. We'll we'll yeah. we'll see. That's just the kind of the you know inconvenience that we run into when we play the games the way we do. Yeah, personally, I think that the boss checkpoints are probably going to die off a little bit more throughout the game. Mm. Uh, it's probably just you know for the sake of getting initiated because I don't think any of these bosses that we really fought in the demo were like true bosses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even with how many there were, it felt like it was all... Like, it was the first act, they said, right? Oh, yeah. And it felt like it was more of a tutorial. Like, every single boss just about had, like, tutorial messages popping up. So, I really think we're going to get more out of it. Even even the boss and the second part of the demo, uh, the two bosses, both of them 
you had more abilities than you would actually have during those fights. So they got like simplified, but I'm sure that the balancing itself is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I have faith in it. I think it's going to be good. One way or another, it'll be fun. But the boss fights do seem a little like uh, simple, mm -hmm. despite how complex the move sets seem. So you know, I was actually getting a, a lot of nostalgic vibes fighting these boss fights, and I was thinking like, why in the world am I getting nostalgia? I mean, I I don't play that many Final Fantasy games. And then I had the sudden urge to play Castlevania Curse of Darkness, and I went to go play that with with, restri with the new kind of restrictions I have on myself now, and I was fighting one of the boss fights. I was like, man, it's actually not too different compared to Final Fantasy XVI, just in terms of just uh, how you can get away with certain attacks by spacing and not having to roll out of the way. And so I think that's what happened was just it kind of, re uh, you know, refired my whole love for... Castlevania Curse of Darkness because this that I call that my Dark Souls game before Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Have you played a lot of uh... Have you played Curse of Darkness? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh man, I, I definitely recommend that, it. It's uh, a shame. I have it. Um, oh, you do have it. Yep, I have pretty much all the Castlevania games. Oh, nice. Yeah, man, pl you definitely play it. Yeah. I've been I'm playing. Too. I'm actually. I'm looking at the. Uh, starting screen right now it plays a little um cinematic every few minutes actually or maybe maybe shorter than that but um i've been going uh, the first boss is actually he only has like a few actually it's funny his first phase is a lot more difficult than his second phase <laughs> but um we'll talk about that some other time um so what do you think about the goblin king fight oh against the big old yeah the big old fat dude ball. with tiny legs tiny skinny legs yeah uh, it was all right. Um, that one, it definitely felt like he had way too much health for how much he did. Right. Yeah, it's, His it didn't feel warranted at all. It's what I like to call um, com combat time value. Yeah, for, for his attacks, yeah. it just wasn't. It didn't warrant that that long of that big of a health bar. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing, right? With it being a fight where you know you're probably gonna get through it on your first try. I guess it makes sense for him to have more health because it's more about like trying to get you to hyper focus on that half health threshold and the stagger system. Yeah. So I think they were trying to elongate the fight to make that enemy seem epic and grand because later I'm sure we're going to be melting those, right? We're going to be fighting that enemy so many times. Like that's, it's only a, a boss in that section. I'm sure we're going to be fighting it countless times. You think we'll see the Goblin King a few more times in the game? Yeah, because it wasn't even called like a Goblin King. It was like a Gigas. troll or something. It was called yeah, Gigas. Gigas. That's right. Or Grigas? Gigas? Grigas? I think they're Gigas or whatever, but... Because <laughs> it's like a... I don't know. Probably Japanese type pronunciation, but I don't know. Did you notice... Um, did you Did you have any problems with the precision dodging or the parry mechanics? So the precision dodging, uh, dodging, um, I don't know. It seemed, it seemed like some moves didn't really work too well, like especially the twirling attack. Um, but I did get the precision dodges. I think I just didn't time it too well because, unfortunately, having only played through everything once, um, it was kind of hard to like determine where my errors were and where it was just uh, good or bad. So I can't really have like a strong opinion on that, but I, it felt good for the most part. Hmm. Um, but the precision dodges, it, it was pretty last moment that you had to do them, which is good and bad. I don't know. I felt like that as my timing was getting better, the, the less amount, the less, uh, the less amount of times they were occurring for me for some reason. Because I almost could... like you had to do them early. Yeah, I had to I had to dodge attack a lot earlier than because I was getting so precise that even the precision dodging didn't seem to be registering. Because when I first started using precision dodging, because at first because originally that was going to be my challenge just to have an unbreakable precision dodging for the boss, and I yeah. almost got it a couple of times. But it seems like once after after so after I was practicing at it for so long, I was getting uh, a lot tighter with the dodging. It seemed like it went away. It just it's like almost like it was disabled. And that it, makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Which is kind of a flaw for yeah. the game. Um, 
in some ways and in some ways not because like I didn't get a chance to experiment with any of the bosses, you know, I just fought them the once. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really encounter that. Um, but I did notice that like there were a lot of times where I dodged what fell split second and I wasn't getting any reward for it. So I was saying that's why I was saying like some moves that felt like they didn't get perfect dodges. Um, and then others it would and it felt like it was kind of gracious with it. So mm -hmm. I think there might be like a specific window um during an animation where the dodge works and then i don't think they like perfectly set up the frames you know well hopefully that's but, hopefully that's just part of the old build like you mentioned like you said it, like this could be a year old so hopefully maybe that's adjusted in the final release so my theory i guess would be that when an enemy doesn't attack right as long as you're within proximity of the attack mm -hmm. there's probably like maybe a circle around the enemy or like you know maybe an extended hitbox when the enemy attacks and that hitbox probably as long as you dodge within that hitbox while it's active then it'll perform that perfect dodge because it seems like it's not so much about like dodging it at the perfect time that the actual weapon itself is about to hit you mm hmm and more about like just dodging within like a time threshold where they expected you to be there i guess i don't know it's weird uh the pairing also fell off to me because it seemed like it only registered for me when it happened on accident <laughs> now pairing you're talking about with the the fist where you have to attack the parry for some reason attack to parry yeah you press square you know they just just a regular attack i don't know it's, it's strange i don't uh, do you remember that at all it, no i don't remember parrying at all whatsoever it, it wasn't even introduced to me as a <laughs> yeah it pops up when you incidentally incidentally do it they don't what is up with that by the way because i'm i released a video today about dark souls and how pairing is just not you know displayed very prominently it's just kind of shuffled to the side and it looks like it's yeah. the same way here where it only pops up if you do it by accident <laughs> yeah because i made it you know like there were some fights where i got a little crazy like on the bosses where i would just like attack a little extra because yeah i didn't really care i wasn't losing much health uh -huh. um but i never noticed that at all because for the most part i was careful about when i attacked and i was always keeping my guard up for you know mm -hmm. perfect dodging or uh, trying to and uh yeah i never noticed that i think i think what it might be with the dodging is the dodges probably have a nice extensive i think this is it okay so you have so many iframes right say you have 10 iframes okay and you start your dodge before the enemy's attacks hitbox hits you right not the actual attack hitbox but the iframe or the perfect dodge hitbox right mm -hmm. where it registers that you're within the attack because that has to be a thing right because otherwise when you dodge um you would have to already have been struck by the weapon for it to register otherwise you could just perfect dodge 10 feet away you know what i mean yeah so you have to be within proximity we can deduce that right so if it takes 10 frames for your dodge to happen and you dodge before that hitbox hits you but you're still within your iframes when the attack passes, then that would be like you dodge too early, right? And the perfect dodge can't happen because you did it outside of that, you know, that timing, that hitbox. Mm -hmm. And then the attack passes through and the per the dodge happens, but the perfect dodge doesn't re register, right? Right. So I think it's less about um, doing it too perfectly and more about, like, the fact that you actually have to maybe get within range of the attack and then dodge into the weapon or dodge into the attack so maybe like understanding that mechanic more you'll be able to trigger it more often yeah that's just my theory but it makes sense <clears throat> so i'll be experimenting with it and i'll let you know what i come up with as i play all right i just yeah you know, it just kind of sucks that it's just not it doesn't register within a tight window though that just really sucks you know yeah, it, it kind of makes sense, though. Like, when I think of it that way, it, it yeah. makes more sense. Because it'd be hard to make it to where it, like, gives you preemptive frames. Like, it would have to basically be a very large, generous window for it to account for that. And even mm. still, 
like you would have to tune every single attack right so that say they start a big sweep right and you dodge what would have fallen into that 10 frame category where you would have started it too early if you got rid of that then you would have to make it perfect so that every time you dodged into the attack right it would have to be within that frame count you would end up hitting the attack and then failing right so that anything within that 10 frames you'd be within the threshold yeah and to calculate that for every single attack would be an absolute chore right so i kind of understand why it doesn't proc that way i feel like that would be an incredibly difficult thing to do mm. unless there's a more elegant solution that they found but i don't think it is right i don't think yeah. there is one I, there probably is one right i mean i'm just spitballing here uh-huh. there's probably a good sweet spot that i just didn't see perhaps um maybe i'll try yeah. that out some you know, sometime later just to see i mean i yeah. know there's got to be a consistency to a consistency to it that i just totally lost at some point because like I said, I think I just eventually started getting more comfortable with the attacks and the timing that I eventually got out of that sweet spot and just couldn't do it yeah. anymore. <laughs> and because it might feel like, okay, I'm dodging earlier through the attack, so I'm doing it as soon as possible. But by doing so, like I said, you're probably doing it before the actual hitbox gets to you. Yeah. So that's a possibility, but it's hard to say. Um, did, you, did you feel that the arenas, um, you know... A, did you feel that they were compl- they complimented the boss fight, you know, the bosses, the, the move sets, and everything? Mm, thinking about it, so far, yes, but there hasn't really been. I, I'd say, I'd say yes, just in the sake that like, or in the sense that none of them ruined the boss fights, right? Yeah, like all of them were fine. They took place in a place that made sense. Um, but I don't, I don't think any of them really like built upon the boss fight or made it like better yeah the environment suited the boss fights everything felt very thematic right but i never felt like oh wow this is really improving the fight other than like what the actual boss did for like the the special evasions and the special attacks like those moments they interacted with the environment in interesting ways quite often mm-hmm. which is cool so in that sense i guess yes but not for the actual fight right yeah I feel like maybe the only time where I really noticed, uh, maybe it's, I don't know, it's not really a problem with the design, it was just more about me and my bad positioning, and that was with the marble fight, where I got a little bit too close to the wall, but I, I was able to get out, so I mean, it wasn't a problem or anything like that, it was just one of those little moments that I noticed where I'm like, ah, I'm getting a little too close between the boss and the wall. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, of course, you know, Morbo, that war, uh, what's it called, Wild, Wild Cry or Wild stomp or wow, heck you know the one where he he charges twice he tracks yeah, you for a brief like moment that. and then Man. yeah yeah he like he tracks you for a small moment and then he eventually goes off of you you know it's like it just disables at some point um that way that's one of my favorite time <laughs> my favorite attacks to avoid because it's just really satisfying <laughs> um and the one, one thing i really love about that fight is that he'll uh, spit these little goo um, pools in the arena, so you got to be mindful about where about where he lands. Because I don't know if you noticed in the video, he lands smack dab in the middle of those pool pits that he spit out, and so I couldn't I couldn't punish him for that attack. <laughs> hmm. I didn't notice that. Um, so the goblin, going back to the goblin boss, of course he has like, uh, I think he basically only has what, three or four attacks. He's got the vertical slam, he's got horizontal sweep, and he's got that spin attack where he spins like, well, how many times does he spin? He does like an initial, you know, spin where it doesn't attack you. You can actually stand right there for just a little bit and get a yeah. few hits in. Then you, you know, of course for me, I, I had to walk away to avoid it entirely. Um... I think he only swings maybe three times, and then he'll start. That that's when the damage detections come in. I don't know if you, if you jump, you get tagged by it or not, but um, and so you know it. You know that. I mean that that attack is pretty much just designed for you to for the precision dodging. That's probably where it. Um, well, you know it's probably just designed around that so you can time it properly as he swings. And it's it's actually one of the most satisfying parts to use precision dodging. I don't know. I don't know for the other boss fights because I didn't use precision dodging after this fight um, but it's a really cool attack because it, it spreads out quite a bit in the arena because I've almost I've barely made it out of it because I've also 
Uh, the first time he did it in my video, I was attacking him while he was starting it up, and then I was walking away, and I just barely made it out, so I didn't attack him during the wind-up anymore. But yeah, that was I, I definitely really liked that attack, and I, I mean, I wish he had a few more brutal attacks, but unfortunately, you know, of course, it's just the it's a demo, yeah. and it's the very first boss. Where, but <clears throat> so about you mentioned jumping, possibly getting hit by him. Um, that actually brings up something really interesting about this game I noticed. Uh, outside of the half stagger bar and the full stagger reduction staggers, mm -hmm. I noticed that if you do jump attacks and you like hit them in the head when they're going to attack, there's like, I, I don't know if this is how it works, but this is how I've noticed it. Um, it might have just been my timing, but it would create like instability frames where you'd like stagger them just by hitting them with a jump attack in the face. Mm -hmm. And I did it to that Gigas and the Dragoon. I did it to both of them. Um, where I would stagger them and then continue to beat them up and they weren't in their stagger phase yet. So huh. I'm really interested in like wondering if there's like weak points on enemies that you can like hit them for a stagger and how that's gonna work out. Yeah see I didn't be nice. I didn't play around with jump attacks very much. I usually just whenever I jumped it was just jumping out of the way uh, from an yeah. attack. Uh, which I was trying I'm sorry. Continue. Oh no, I was just saying. For an example, like in the the Gigas uh, fight, I just barely made it out of the vertical slam attack where I just jump out of the way. I'm surprised I didn't get tagged by that, but it's just I guess the you know the <laughs> the damage detection is pretty generous. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I tried to use all the systems in the game like completely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was trying to do like some jumping combos, some melee magic combos, and I was trying to use all the abilities. Not necessarily for the sake of, like, I don't know, making it easier or anything, but just to, like, see how it all works and how it functions and what it, what is possible with it. Just trying to have fun with the demo, but still keep yeah. it, like, mildly challenging. And, uh, I feel like in doing so, it, it did help to, like, shorten the fights a little bit, but it really didn't shorten them enough to make it feel like I was cheating at all. Um, which is good. It's good that you can kind of style on stuff and not feel like you're destroying everything, you know? Right, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I love it. I, I just love spending, like, hours on a boss. You know, it's just, I, I don't know, that's very calming to me for some reason. It's like fishing almost, where it's like it's the thrill of almost catching something and then kind of apply it to the same thing of just fighting a boss for a few hours, just finally getting, picking it apart and finding it, comf you know, finding comfort in you know, walking around and finding what attacks feel good and what attacks, you know, you should punish. And um, right. and I, I had no problem just spending hours on the Goblin King by himself. I mean, yeah, he was simplistic, <laughs> but I enjoyed finding ways to make the, the, inter the encounter more difficult because I just got more value out of it. Uh, so, but, nice. um, just trying to think uh, what else. Yeah, I only spent like, I spent like two and a half hours in the demo mm -hmm. in its entirety. I pretty much just like, I scoured everything, tried to find everything, you know? Yeah. And I uh, spent a lot of time looking at environments, but... And I'm I'm hoping that the ability wheel has... I mean, I'm sure the ability wheel will expand more basic attacks with your weapon instead of just, you know... Yeah, I'm hoping so. I'm the not... Four swing. Yeah, like, I'm hoping you'll get a charge attack eventually. That would be nice, you know, so that way when you're during staggers, maybe you can get a bit more extra damage in, perhaps. You, you do get a charge attack. That's what I was talking about earlier. You get the melee charge attack and the range charge attack. Oh, wait, do you get that in the demo? Yeah. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't see that. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot, quite a bit of interesting things in the demo as far as uh, unlockable abilities. Okay. You get to like you can vault off of enemies too, making it like a double jump. But the way it works is you can jump, start comboing on an enemy, and if you do the melee range melee range kind of combo <clears throat> while you're fighting, you actually can extend your combo even longer, and then you can do the vault after your combo to completely reset your combo, and then you can do another combo extension, and then you can follow it up with an ability that you can unlock where you press X and square at the same time, and it does like a dropping plunge attack to finish the combo. So you can make really long aerial combos in this way, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, yeah. I didn't get to the point where I pulled off that full combo because I was mostly, you know, fighting bosses and the other enemies died too fast. But 
when I fought a boss, you know, the boss would do an attack or jump away, so I was never able to get that, like, long combo. And I just stumbled with the controls quite a bit, uh, considering it was, like, a shorter period of time. I, I made a lot of mistakes. In, like, every single one of my boss fight videos, I make mistakes. But... I like how uh, at least a couple enemies have can shoot projectiles and they're actually well telegraphed where you know you're you know that they're doing it and so you can prepare yourself in in the in the battle. So I, I really yeah. like that little um, you know addition to the instead of just fighting like all the same goblins they do actually have some projectile style enemies in it. And uh, yeah, I do like the enemy variety and right. I like that there's like healers and stuff that you'll fight too so like you want to take out the healers first mm -hmm. and then take out the mages and blah 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 so i thought that was cool and i was thinking like all right well maybe the healer sucks so i didn't kill the healer right away i wanted to see what kind of healing proficiency it had and i got an enemy down to like 10 percent, and then boom fully healed just like that and i was like oh okay shit i really gotta take this sucker out did you notice that the uh butterflies like the illuminating butterflies show you the where they go yeah, the little blue ones. Yeah, I'm glad we got something different instead of just torches. <laughs> you know, how like yeah. almost every game's like, oh yeah, just follow the torches. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like uh, the butterflies. I don't know how often that's going to be used. I only saw it a little bit. But I think it would be nice. I mean, there's already a mechanic in the game, right, where you press a button and it points you where you're going. So yeah. that's what it is. But, but no one's going like to use when... that. <laughs> uh, I'd be surprised. I think a lot I'm of people just... are going to use it. I'm just kidding, but... Yeah, um, but what I prefer is when like the level design kind of naturally shows you the way, or like just through the exploration of it, right? Like it when a game promotes exploration by hiding things in the nooks and crannies, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you find a passageway in a nook or cranny, like that's more exciting. And then when you have like you use lighting, right? Like so a well lit nook or cranny maybe is gonna inspire you to go there, right? Because yeah. like where's the light coming from in like a darker area? So you can use lighting, you can use sound, all kinds of stuff to like lure the player in. And I didn't really notice much of that at all, but everything was pretty straightforward, like linear, obvious paths. Yeah. Until you got into some of like the arenas and stuff, um, the arena would kind of like hide the path forward where it was like a little breakable wooden wall, like you said, which is cool. But I guess, I guess the reason I like that would be while you're fighting the enemies, you're not like having your attention grabbed by the way forward you know what i mean it's not like oh i should be going this way i can just run past the enemies like you're engaged in the fight and you're not looking at like the way forward because it's kind of hidden so that was neat do you think the game will open up at some point i do i think that there's going to be more like open kind of exploration areas i don't think it's going to be an open world right um based on the way the traveling system works so far but that could just be because it was you know, the tutorial area where you're playing as the kid. I have mm -hmm. a feeling when you're an adult that the game is going to give you more freedom to explore. Um, I have a feeling you're going to be able to backtrack and go places. Um, I don't think it's going to be open world, but there's probably going to be, like, transitions and stuff between areas um, that you could probably walk through to get to the next area. Sort of just, you know, good old Final Fantasy style. Like, you know, Final Fantasy X, you could do that, where you're just going through an area, you walk through a little thing, and it... Kind of does a little cutscene loading screen, and then you go to the next area. I think it's going to be more like that. So the prime. Than, uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be open world, but we'll find out. What are we going to say? Uh, do you think the primary gameplay is going to be with the you know the the character we were introduced initially, where it's just a you know the adult character, and you, and we're pretty much when it's whenever we're playing as him younger, that's just going to be like flashback scenarios. So. Ultimately, I think we're going to play as him. Uh, it was nice playing as his brother for a moment, but <laughs> all, all he really could do was, like, you know, his two attacks and the ability to cure. But what that tells me, right, the fact that he had a cure spell and the fact that he had those moves tells me that the actual party members that you get may be playable. And mm. I hope that they are. I really hope that they are. Because there's clearly a party system, right? And they show the little uh, pixelated... Yes. Uh, character moving right and any time that that's been a thing your party members have been playable right i can't think of a time where you have your party displayed that way and you can't play them right mm -hmm. well, so they... what that tells me what oh they didn't die right there's two dudes 
the uh, axe dude and the sword guy, like during the transformation? Oh no, I think they died. Did, oh, the, you think they did? I think they got incinerated, just like completely. Well, I know the trainer guy got incinerated, but I wasn't. I'm not sure about the other two. Maybe they took cover with the dog. Maybe they could have. Because I know there's the dog's theory, still alive. There's a theory that uh, maybe you told me this. I don't know, but there's a theory that um, Clive is the other uh, icon. I don't know why I can't think of the name. It's in every Final Fantasy. What's the name of the... Uh... It's right on the tip of my tongue. The other fire icon, other than the Phoenix. Uh, Ifrit. Yeah, yeah, Ifrit. Um, people think he might be Ifrit, and that he lost control and transformed and then killed his own brother. And that's why you kind of hear him like monologuing about it. But also like in a daze. So... That would be interesting, but also I don't know how I feel about that. And that would explain why I survived. Oh, I thought that was a given that he transformed into the Ifrit. Is it? Yeah, I thought, you know, just judging from the way the cutscenes played out, I thought he transformed. Yeah. So what, why do you think we play as the Phoenix and not the Ifrit? Well... Why do you think we... Oh, I don't know. Just for the sake of that being more of a plot twist and also giving you like because you're on the side of the brother right mm -hmm. they're the good guys and i i don't think it's a given that if it is clive okay i don't think that that's meant to be the intention you think it's misleading i don't think that it's necessarily wrong but i don't think that it was meant to be like super obvious right mm. because they try to set it up as like a bad like to me it looked like they brought in someone to transform but i don't remember the location that he transformed in because they show you the actual like transformation happening right and to me i thought it was one of their guys like i thought they like brought in somebody and that was their like weapon to fight the phoenix because none of the people that were on the enemy side like reacted to it like they were shocked you know what i mean yeah that's a good point actually um hmm yeah it felt like a part of their plan and it, it felt like he was in a daze because he got knocked up he got knocked out you know yeah, he got right. like blasted on the ground and he's just like in a daze like kind of barely able to see what's happening because when it when it had that like weird camera view where everything was like under a different filter you know mm -hmm. it wasn't like it was a first person perspective of ifrit with him doing commentary it was from a distance right watching and I don't know if that was just to kind of show that like he was in a daze and he was knocked out or if he was Ifrit, he could have been, but I'd like to think that there's two possibilities there that it's actually somebody else and not who you think, because maybe they did try to allude to it being a possibility just to throw you off, you know, but I don't know. I, th I thought if it was going to be like a fight that you do later in the game, uh, maybe that's my fault for not always looking at the cutscene. <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes yeah. i'm not yeah you know, i drift off and look at my phone for a little bit so maybe i missed something i'll have to rewatch it so that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> i watched it pretty meticulously but also i wasn't thinking that he would be if it like just by the way everything played out it felt like an attack the way it was introduced like mm -hmm. the enemy was attacking and this was their weapon like this is how they planned on destroying the phoenix like, they came prepared like it was a hit, you know? Yeah. They weren't going there to start a war. They were going there to kill somebody specific, and they came prepared. So that's that's how I feel. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, too, because, I mean, it's especially the reactions, they just felt like everything went exactly to plan, like you said. Yeah. Um. um so was there anything else you wanted to wrap up on? We're getting about an hour in. Um Unless you want to stay a little bit longer. Um. Yeah, I'm not in any kind of hurry. I just wasn't sure how much you know I'd really be able to talk about it, since it was only a two-hour demo, and we're managing to talk for almost you know an hour about it, so that's pretty good. Uh, um. Well. Um. Uh, was there anything else you want to say about the Goblin King, or what? Crit Gigas, whatever. Uh, <laughs> definitely not Gigas. That was not 
there was not much there to talk about, in my opinion. But I also didn't really take them that far. Yeah. But with a limited move set and stuff, like I got a pretty good grasp of what could be done with them from there. Mm-hmm. Um, I I figured out his tracking. I figured out you know his moves and how I would no roll them or how I would avoid them. It was all pretty straightforward. Oh yeah. Uh, the fight I really liked was actually the dragoon. I really liked that fight. It wasn't super deep. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I did like the duo. I liked fighting the two uh, harpies. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. I like uh, the way they kind of work off each other a little bit, and the little like, I like that they have like the good Final Fantasy fourteen type moves where it's like, the arena, actually kind of, sets up as like a stage for attacks. Like there's the one where, it creates like a an alternating pattern of, like magic that like slides across, and then it does it the other way as well. So it almost creates like a grid. And there's like, it's like a checkerboard of like safe, where all the black tiles are safe and all the white tiles are danger. But it's more like a, just like a bunch of columns of magic going across and then like horizontal going across. I don't right. know how to explain it very well, but like, I like stuff like that where like it's an arena wide kind of telegraph thing to cause you to move into a position, you know? It just like keeps you on your toes as well as fighting the enemies themselves. Um, so I appreciate that. What about the Morbo fight? Did you like that at all? Uh, yeah, it was cool. Like, it's one of my favorite enemies in Final Fantasy aesthetically, that and the Behemoth. But, I don't know. It was kind of a bummer to have it appear so quickly and to be taken down as, like, your first big feat. Well, I'm sure because we'll see like, more of those. Yeah. I'm just hoping that they're, like well done and that they're actually a challenge and that they add more to it than just what it did because as it stood it was pretty underwhelming um it's way too easy a fight so hopefully they build upon it in a meaningful way my wife is home early <laughs> oh, nice. well, we can go ahead and wrap it up because i'm i'm pretty well i think we hit most of the points okay well um i, I <clears throat> Sounds good. Um, we'll definitely we can definitely talk more about it later on. on, on a, well, maybe on the first uh, first impressions is when the game first comes out. I mean, I know you're going to be busy, so I mean, whenever you can get a chance to talk about it, we'll definitely discuss the differences on uh, on the final game and whatever. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming back on and uh, for a, for just a little bit, and we'll uh, talk to you later. All right. Take care. All right. You too.